We kind of modeled this a little bit after uh, what Professor Lee talked about in lecture with the uh, airplane uh, soft walls. So it's user control up to a point when it's about to hit something, then it'll auto turn. Uh, let's see if we can look at that. As you can see, Travis has his uh, gestures down mm -hmm. pretty pat right now. Travis, can you show me uh, autocorrect? Right yeah, he's going right at it and it's turning away. All right, now we're going to test out the claw. It takes a pretty fine amount of control, which could be something in the future that, in the future, if we were to keep working on this, maybe to, uh, yeah, that's nice right. Worth noting, we could have made the ramp steeper and more interesting, but uh, we had a problem where the ultrasonics detected it as an object instead of a ramp. So that's something we'd hopefully improve on for determining, you know, what can we avoid and what we can go over. Um, that's all I had to say. Though. Interested to know what you think. His first time using it. <laughs> and here's the design. As you can see, we have uh, the Arduino, we have a Zigbee network, we have our three sensor boxes that basically are talking, and they're all coming in through one channel. So, uh, you know, it's, there's some software stuff that I'll talk about soon. Uh, and then on this side, uh, we have a Wi-Fi network, we have the Arduino talking to a computer, and then that computer talking to the thermostat. There's a reason why we didn't go directly, and when we get to that, we'll, we'll talk about that further. And we show that we can save 13% of energy compared with the previous 
petroatherton. So we can see that um, up here we have the control stuff. We, we know it's occupied. The fan is currently on. The both compressors are on. Um, and here we see the sensor data that, that gives us there. So the light's on. The CO2 is at 912. Uh, it says medium. It doesn't mean like dangerous or anything. It just means that we expect there's people in there. Um, and the humatures are 121. That's not right. I'm pretty sure that's bad data because there's no way. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, it updated. OK, 70. That's better. Um, <laughs> 72 um, in, in one area and 70.8 in the other. So we can see that there's actually a big difference in the temperatures um, even in, in the same room. And then we simply have this uh, little server updates thing which tells us uh, which sensors are currently online. So it tells us to point those off. There's two buttons. One says breath test, one says sobriety test that Nate just talked about. So we'll do the breath test. And now it says breathe into breathalyzer. So first I'll do, if there's no breath, it waits five seconds and then it says no alcohol detected or device timeout if you have consumed alcohol. Please try again. So if we try it again, we'll go back to the main screen and hit breath test. So now I put a drop of alcohol in here. Hopefully that's enough. So now it says analyzing. And basically what it's doing is it's waiting for the signal to plateau and kind of stabilize. And once it does that, it says done. Blood alcohol content 0.04. So that's, that's your reading and that's it. Um, as you can see, you have the low level autopilot here, XP, there's a GPS parts module. We, the GPS, the original GPS used to sit on top, but it was lost during the crash. Uh, the solder pads were ripped out, so we're using a backup for now. But of course, we can't get a GPS lock here, so that's the moving point. So as you can see, the control services, well, the natural mode of the plane is to stabilize to level flight. So you have the, the elevator compensating for pitch angle. And then, as well as the rudder for y'all. Um, sitting inside the main fuselage in front of the servos is our multiplexer. What it does is, I, if I flip the channel 5 switch here, I can go back to map control. So the plan is to get the plane, on, to fly the plane on the map control into us, um, sufficiently high altitude, and then we can turn on the autopilot and see how it stabilizes. And so man landings and takeoffs are manually controlled for safety reasons. And so on the point again, we have autopilot. And the XB is reporting basically the orientation angles back to the ground station. We actually have the data stream from the crash. It's very interesting. You can see a 30 degree pitch downwards in these last rows. Yeah. <laughs> forward two meters. Uh, usually it'll crash into Constance, but hopefully it won't. So as you can see, this is Constance. As you can see, it messed up, but it'll turn, drift it a little bit. Oh, no. oh it's going to hit the projector? Oh, no. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So this is the path it planned. Uh, and then it will go forward and land. Okay. So as you can see, it drifted quite a bit and our control was a little bit off as it uh, moved towards Constance, but as you can see, it sort of followed the path it originally planned yeah. here. It detected Constance as a wall in the map. It detected uh, Lily, I think, Wait, here. I think that might be... Um, yeah, that's Lily. Yeah, this is Lily, and this is the other wall behind it. This is the wall, the, the people there, and this is the big space it sees over here. And that's because the range of the range finders is only three meters, so it's not able to see the other wall at the end. Uh. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> he didn't like the smell. <laughs> and he changed the numbers. And we can go back to the previous one. Stop, stop, stop. Wow!
Wow. It's spinning too much. The yaw is becoming an issue now. So there's a black dot. If you guys can see, it's kind of moving around. That's where it thinks the position of the quad rotor is. And then there's, there's also, it's hard to see, there's five red dots. They're really hard to see. It's very faint. Um, and they have circles around them. The circles is the projected distance it thinks it is from the quad, from, from the quad rotor. So, oh, and if it turns, so normally the circles are blue. If they're red, that means it's gone, it, the distance is bad and it's like too high. Like it, it's, it's like physically can't be that. Um, so, so you can see one, one of the beacons is pretty bad. When it's in the air, it's, it's much better because they're at the same height roughly, so it's much better. You get a much better pass, so we'll try running it and see. Uh, you can't see it. There's supposed to be a green line that's connecting it to where it's supposed to go. It's really hard to see. Oh, as you can see, yeah, now it's spiking a bunch. Um, so if it gets close enough or if it sees a QR code, it'll land. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so the QR code on the ground is where it's trying to go. And now, yeah, so. 